Hello everyone and welcome to the episode 23 of the Mobile Networks Overview course. In this episode, I want to talk about S1 based handover. Uh, in the previous episode, we, mm, we talked about X, X1 based handover and I promised you to discuss about S1 based. Okay. Uh, which you remember that S1 is between eNodeB and MME. The interface name was uh, S1. Okay. Or in some uh, terminologies, they say S1C, uh, as you can see here, S1C or S1MME. Okay. Here, uh, as you can see, we have a source. Uh, we have a source eNodeB. We have sor uh, source MME, source S gateway, uh, P gateway, and this is, uh, oh sorry, I, uh, I forgot to put an S here. Uh, here we have a target in ODB, target MME, and target S gateway. And uh, you can see here we have a direct uh, data. This is uh, the direct line is for data, and this is for, and uh, this, uh, this line is for signaling as you can see here okay so uh, the ue uh, one uh, one uh, is moving from this area and uh, an s1 based handover will be performed and uh, i should explain for you that uh, one of the requirements for this type of handover is that uh, this uh, as we will see later the target in ODB uh, should have a uh, connection uh, with the uh, source MME. Okay, so let's see what will happen uh, when this subscriber is uh, is uh, moving to the area that the connection is uh, becoming uh, the conne its connection is becoming uh, poor. So what will happen? Uh, message uh, name handover required uh, first the inodb will uh, will decide to trigger a relocation via s1 so uh, handover required message uh, will be sent from source inodb to source mme okay based on the decision uh, made by source inodb uh, according to the poor quality or something else then um, the source MME will forward relocation request to target MME to the target MME. Okay, so one of uh, one of another requirements is that source MME has also connection to the target MME. If each of these conditions are not met, so the S1 based handler will not occur. Okay, okay, uh, and in this in this step step four. Uh, since uh, there should be a, a separate uh, session, a new session for this subscriber because he's, he, he wants to move to the new uh, uh, MME and S gateway, so the target MME will send a create session request to this uh, target S gateway and uh, it will also send a create session request uh, mm, to the target P gateway, or if the, uh, or maybe in some scenarios the P gateway can be the same. It depends on the scenarios. Okay, uh, then the target MME will uh, send handover request. That uh, the target MME will send handover request to the target inode B. And it will the inodb will send an acknowledgement. This is the uh, preparation for the signaling part. Okay, but what will happen next? Then uh, here the target S gateway, uh, as I told to you, will send a, a request based on that create session request to the uh, target P gateway. It may be the same. Uh, P gateway or the new one, no problem. Uh, however, it will create indirect data forwarding tunnel. It will uh, take that information from the P gateway and then responds to the TMME and create indirect data forwarding tunnel response. Okay. 
this step and here uh, MME will forward the relocation response and the tunnel information to the source MME and uh, here we have also a step create indirect data forwarding tunnel here and uh, finally uh, we have a handover comment here handover comment here okay uh, from UE at the last step a UE will send handover command handover command here okay uh, but this, uh, these are steps what's related related to signaling but what is what will happen to the data part uh, so as you can see here uh, in this step uh, the UE is detached from the old cell and is connected to the new cell you can see here to the target in node B so uh, as you see data pass for forwarding is like this from source in node B to source gateway and uh, target as gateway uh, and here but the new user data pass is like this from inod, uh, target inode B to target S, S gateway and the P gateway okay and this is the data play okay and uh, finally you can see that uh, here we have the uh, final uh, final uh, signaling and data path for the signaling part you can see that here uh, we have uh, 12 uh, we have this step handover notify which sends from t target inode B to target MME and then uh, forward completion the acknowledgement from this source inode B to source MME and then target MME then here uh, we have modify bearer request if uh, for some modification in di uh, in tunnel information or some uh, or some other information uh, we will have uh, we usually have in most uh, scenarios we have a modify bearer request response here and then uh, a, a target as gateway will also will also send this modify bearer request to this P gateway and it will send the response and after all of this uh, uh, finished we have a direct line from this uh, UE to direct tunnel to the new cell uh, new MME new S gateway and the P gateway and after these uh, steps uh, user equipment and subscriber uh, can uh, use uh, can have the service uh, from the new network uh, as you can see uh, the, the one of the important item here it, it was that the UE during this process uh, during these steps had service and this is the uh, key important uh, part of the handover in attach uh, there is no mandatory uh, 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 field that user has must uh, uh, have the service but in the handover handover occurs during the service okay um, so uh, I am I, I wish that this, uh, this episode uh, was useful and informative for you. Uh, in the next episode, uh, I will uh, start introducing IMS, IP Multimedia Subsystem, and Voice over LTE. And uh, in the next couple of slides, we will go to introduction to 5G and 5G core. Uh, don't uh, forget to uh, introduce my channel uh, to your friends and colleagues and kindly inform me about uh, my weakness and strengths and all of your comments are warmly welcomed. Uh, thank you for your time and watching and hope to see you in the next episode. Bye.